get started. Happy Monday, everyone. Did anybody watch the Super Bowl last night? Oh, one, two, three. Extra points. Extra points. So if I'm a little bit sleepy, that might be the reason why. I'm going to start by passing up the syllabus. Any questions before we get started? I've never heard anybody ask a question before we got started because I think the, the anticipation is so high, the excitement and the anticipation is so high that everybody's just like, get on with it, I need to learn as fast as possible. Okay, so this is the data visualization module CSC337 for third year students and CSC M37 for master students. It's worth 15 credits, which is kind of a lot. We're teaching in teaching block two. It's approximately 20 lecture hours plus nine optional labs. So there is a lab for a module, but it's optional. You can or you you don't have to come. It's for people that really want extra help with the coursework. The lecture times are normally Mondays at 12 and 1700 hours in SOM 107, which is over there somewhere, over there. And like I said today, it, the, the labs are normally optional. My name is Robert Laramie. You can call me Bob. I have an office in room 113, Computational Foundry. Probably you've all found the Computational Foundry by now. I have a phone number. I have office hours. The best time to reach me is in the afternoons, like Thursday and Friday afternoons. And there are two teaching assistants for this module. One is named Mohammed Alhabi and the other the other is Ayla Farat. And some of you might have seen them around or met them from other modules, but I'm sure they'll look familiar to you. And they will come to the labs for uh, assistance with the coursework. There is a web page for this module. So if you can find my if you can like type my name into Google for example and find my teaching web page as an example and then scroll through the list the amazing list of classes there's a database module web page with lots of helpful information on it <clears throat> like for example, this module has its own, has a YouTube channel. There is a DataViz YouTube channel, which is very helpful. And there are lots of nice things on this web page. You can have a look at that in your, uh, you know, outside of class or, or inside of class since you're all sitting in front of the computer right now. There's also all the material is on Blackboard, so all the assignments, the PDF files, the slides are on Blackboard. So on the YouTube channel are lecture recordings. So we're going to record the lectures. 
this has a lot of advantages. If you miss a class, you can still, you know, listen in on the class. If you're not a native English speaker, it's quite nice because you can repeat listening to things a few times. It's also very useful for exam revision. So when you're trying to prepare for the exam, and you might want to review some material, it's useful in that sense. It's also useful in case you didn't understand something the first time you heard it. That happens a lot. So, or maybe you fell asleep during class, so you didn't quite get it. So it's useful for a lot of reasons. And that's one, those are some of the reasons we do it. It's also useful for getting a preview of what's to come. So if you're wondering, like, what is this class like? What's coming? You can watch last year's lectures. They're all there. So there are some nice playlists I encourage you to have a look at. Right there's the database YouTube channel. And there are some playlists. And some useful playlists are like the Data Visualization Lectures 2018, right? The, uh, the, we'll create a new one for 2019, the Data visual, Visualization Lectures for 2019. There are, there's a playlist called Questions and Answers on Assignments, <clears throat> if I can find it right here. Questions and Answers on Assignments. There are something like a hundred questions and answers on the assignments already there. So I encourage you, before you ask a question, to see if it's there. And the, the questions are actually in the comments of the videos, so you don't actually have to watch the videos if you just want to see what the questions are. The answers are not there, but the, the actual questions are there. And then there's another useful playlist, Visualization and Related Questions and Answers. And that's interesting because it goes over test questions. So, so like there'll be a, a test question on there, and then there'll be like a perfect answer. Maybe not a perfect answer, but certainly an answer that would score you a distinction level, all explained in, in detail, right, step by step, very slow. So it's useful for that reason. We're also going to use a website called visguides.org. Visguides.org is a really kind of new, uh, well, the idea is not very new, but the website is new. And you can get professional help with any of your data viz questions on that website. So if at any point you have a question, you can actually just post it on this website and people will answer from all over the world, not just this module. <laughs> so you could even like have people arguing over an answer. Like I could put an answer there and then someone else from somewhere else would say, no, Bob, you're wrong, you loser. Like, that, you know, so it's really democratic, open, global, no, well, no like uh, strict rules. We have 50% coursework and 50% examination. So there will be three assessed coursework assignments during this semester. Details will be announced as we progress. But if you're wondering about them, you can find... That's Mohammed, by the way. <laughs> you can find the first assignment on Blackboard already. It's there. And you can find it uh, like last year's version on the YouTube channel. All that stuff. And of course, there's a test which is very theoretical. The way this module really works is it's kind of a theory part, that's the lectures, and then there's the applied part, which is the courseworks. So the courseworks are very applied, very real world, and the lecture tends to be more theoretical, but also with some elements of application. There are some recommended textbooks, one's called Interactive Data Visualization, Foundations, Techniques, and Applications. Another one's called Data Visualization, Principles, and Practice. If you can only get one book, then I would recommend the first one. 
there are a few other books there. There are lots of data viz books out there right now. And if you want to know what are the data visualization books out in the world that exist, there's a survey there, a survey of information visualization books. And you can download that. It's available online. It's been a survey of something like 40 different books and their characteristics. And this field is rapidly expanding and evolving. It's a very interesting topic these days. It's, a, it's kind of a hot topic. Yeah, so it's lots of people are publishing lots of books right now on, on data visualization. There are some important research papers, and they're all on Blackboard or on my webpage. And then we have the lecture schedule on page three there. You'll notice that the lectures mostly occur before the Easter recess. And then after the, rec the Easter recess, we have two guest lecture slots. So most of the things will occur. There's a list of topics that we cover, like introductory topics, information visualization topics, and volume viz and flow visualization topics. Any questions about the syllabus? Did everybody actually get a copy of the syllabus? Okay, good. I guess everybody did. If you didn't get a copy, you can find it on Blackboard, like for convenience, so it's already there. But it looks like everybody got a copy. Are there any extra copies of the syllabus hanging around somewhere? Is there like a pile of extra ones? I tried to print out some extra ones. Could you pass those forward? Great. So if anybody needs a copy of the syllabus, there are some extra ones here, which is nice. You want a copy of the syllabus? Here's two. This is an attendance register. If everybody could sign this, that would be really great. If your name is not already there, please um, add it. <coughs> and if you do have questions or comments, feel free to interrupt anytime. I really don't mind. In fact, I prefer it. I think it's a little bit boring for only me to do the talking. So you might find that I ask questions sometimes of the audience.